Hello again. One of the things which some people find puzzling is why the only ethnic history we ever hear of in Britain is black history. Why not Indian history or Jewish history? I remember when the first Black History Month was organised in Britain in 1987. It was an initiative by people who had once been at the old GLC, the Greater London Council, under Ken Livingstone. Well, that, that was before it was abolished um, the previous year. It was abolished in '86, and some of those people by that time had already got the idea of Black History Month going. And so it was, uh, the first one was celebrated in 1987. I thought at the time it was all a bit odd because the overwhelming majority of black people in Britain had only arrived after the end of the Second World War, 40 years earlier. It wasn't much of a history to build an entire month's worth of celebrations on. However, I underestimated the resourcefulness and cunning of the left-wing types who were determined to import this American event. If the history did not exist, then it would need to be created from scratch. There have always been in Britain small numbers of foreigners from other parts of the world who are either visiting the place or sometimes living in the British Isles. French Protestants, Jews from Eastern Europe, Arabs, African sailors, Caribbeans, Chinese people, those from South Asia and so on. The numbers of such people are absolutely tiny and always have been. To build up a Black History Month, it was necessary to invent an entire history of black people in this country, dating back hundreds and then thousands of years. And also to suggest continuity, to suggest that it had always been the case, that there was always con a continuous occupation of parts of Britain by black people. To begin with, of course, there was Mary Seacole, and it was the centenary of her death in 1981 which really sparked off the idea that maybe Britain could do something along the same lines as the Americans' Black History Month. You've got to bear in mind that at this time in the 1980s, only a tiny fraction of just over 1% of people in Britain were black. But in the same year that Black History Month was launched, there was a general election and the first black MPs were voted in. That was when Diane Abbott, uh, Bernie Grant and Paul Boateng became MPs. There was certainly an appetite at that time in left-wing circles for Black History Month, something to celebrate being black. It took a little while, but each year one or two more black people who had been in Britain before the 20th century were found. Sometimes they weren't really black at all, but rather African. But since to most people the words black and African are interchangeable, that didn't really matter too much. The old word um, blackamoor, of course, sometimes refers to black Africans and at other times to Arabs and Berbers from North Africa but it was all grist to the mill of those working on the project. Other minorities were specifically excluded from the whole business from the very beginning. So Chinese people or Indians who had been living in Britain were simply discarded as not being relevant to the cause. Because there are no reliable figures from the past, the field was left open to invent statistics at will, and there was little chance of anybody being able to contradict them. For example, it is now widely said that there were about 15,000 black people living in Elizabethan England. This number is pure, absolutely pure invention. When Miranda Kaufman was writing her book Black Tudors, about which I spoke the other day, she was only able to find five black Tudors to study. And one of those was only included because she was described as a blackamoor. She'd been born in Morocco and was almost certainly an Arab, not, not a black African at all. The same trick is performed now for the 18th century and the odd image from old pictures by people like Hogarth is seized upon and brandished as evidence for a thriving population of Africans in Regency London. 
This nonsense then finds its way into things like the Netflix drama Bridgerton. Of course, if any other ethnicity were to settle down and play this game, then they too could construct such an alternative history in which people with their skin colour had been living in Britain for hundreds of years. Take Hindus from India, for example. Just as there were one or two Africans in Victorian London, so too there were a handful of Indians, and they turn up as well in old pictures. Viewers might ask themselves why they never seem to be shown these pictures, and the only ones to which anybody draws attention are those which feature black people. The thumbnail to this video shows a picture of a Hindu and his daughter selling Bible tracts in London in the mid-19th century. Mayhew wrote about him. For many viewers this will seem slightly shocking because there's so much focus on the black people living in Britain hundreds of years ago that we forget all about the Indians. The woman who wrote the um, children's book The Secret Garden wrote a book called A Little Princess and she mentions Indians in London, so does um, Arthur Conan Doyle in the Sherlock Holmes stories. It would be perfectly possible to put together a Chinese history month or a Hindu month in exactly the same way that Black History Month has been created. The only thing is though, because the Chinese and Indian Hindus do actually have a history, they're not particularly interested in showing off or trying to prove things to other people, let alone dupe them as is done each year in October in this country with Black History Month. <laughs> 